Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you one of the new features of Java 1.7. We're going to take a look at the new functionality of the switch statement. In Java 1.7, you can now use a string in a switch statement. So what we're going to do is just create a new application. And uh, the type of application is going to be just a Java desktop application. By the way, I'm using JDeveloper here. If you prefer to use a different IDE such as Eclipse, that's fine. We're going to call this switch test one. Now, the package prefix, I'm going to make this com.fireboxtraining. So any kind of Java classes that I create by default will have this package prefix. And of course, you can always override that. Here's the name of my project. When we're working with JDeveloper, all of your code is going to be contained inside of a project, which is then contained inside of an application. So we just hit Next, and we can stick with the defaults. Now, before I create any files, I want to go to my project right here in my application navigator. I'm going to right click on this and go to my project properties. I want to ensure that I'm using the appropriate version of Java. Okay, so make sure you go to Libraries and Class Path, and then just make sure you're using Java 1.7. If you try to do this in 1.6 or earlier, then of course using strings in a switch statement is not going to work. So let's create our new class. I'm going to right click on here, and I'm going to say New. We're going to create a Java class. And we'll just call this my switch test. And we're going to include a main method in there. I'm not going to bother with a constructor from the superclass there. You can leave that out. And uh, there are no abstract methods that we're implementing, so that we can uncheck that as well. Let's go ahead and just hit OK. And we have the skeleton of our program here. What I'm going to do is just get rid of this line. You can either get rid of it or you can comment it out. It's really not doing anything for us because I'm going to have all the logic inside of our main method here. So let's say that we have a string already defined called current month. And let's assume that it's set to April. Now let's take a look at our switch statement. The way a switch statement works is that we use the keyword switch, and then in parentheses, the variable that we want to look at. OK, so here we can say current month. OK, so inside of our switch statement right here, we're going to have different cases. So for example, if the current month is either March, put a colon here. Let's do one more case, actually two more cases. April and May. Then we're going to print out a friendly little message, such as spring is in the air. Now you can have other cases as well. For example, uh, we might say uh, case June, July, August. But before we do that, I want to talk about the logic that happens um, when we encounter a switch statement. Okay, so for example, if I have in here case June, let's just put summer is here. What's really going to happen here? Well, first of all, we're missing some break statements, which means that execution will continue. It's not going to break out of the structure. Okay. So uh, the other thing that I want to address is case sensitivity. Notice that this April here begins with a capital A. What if we want to make this a case insensitive match? Well, what we would do is simply say current month dot to lower case. Okay, so if it's March, April, or May, then it will print out spring is in the air, but it will also print out summer is here because we're missing a break statement. So we want to put our break statement right here. 
We'll put a break statement right here as well. And then we can have a default case, which is going to be executed if none of the previous conditions are true. We'll put in here neither spring nor summer. Let's put a couple more cases in here. Okay, looking good. Let's just clean this up a little bit. One of the things that we can do in here is just right click and say reformat and it does really nice indentation for us. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to look at my log window and it tells us spring is in the air. So just to show you, just to demonstrate what happens in, in case we forget the break statement, Let's go ahead and comment this guy out right here and run it again. You'll see that both of these executed. Why didn't the default case get executed? Well, that's because we had a break statement right down here. Now, prior to Java 1.7, what we could do instead of working with strings is work with a data type called enum. Now, this is available as part of the language in uh, Java 1.5 and 1.6. And um, what, what I'm going to show you right here, we just have an empty class, and I'm going to show you how this data type works. So inside of my uh, main code here, I'm going to define a data type called enum. Okay. And basically, it's an enumeration. So really, uh, we have month here, which is basically our enumeration data type. And then in curly braces, we put what the possible values are. They're going to be separated by commas, but don't use any quotes. So here I'm going to say, for example, January, comma, February. I'll go through several of these months here. April, May. I'll just go through June to save some time. Okay, so what does our switch statement now look like in here? Well, let's have our current month again. Instead of it being a string, this time we're going to make the data type be month. Okay, and let's set it to month.april. Now, taking a look at our switch statement, we're going to simply say switch. We're going to look at our current month. Have our curly braces and then our different cases. So once again, since we're not working with strings, we're not using quotes. We're going to say here, January and case February. Notice that we don't have to fully qualify. We just say January or February without the month dot in front of it. It's really not necessary. It's just extra typing. Okay, so um, if it's January or February, we're going to print out winter. And let's not forget our break statement. And then let's look at March. April and May, and you get the picture. Don't forget the semicolon. And let's have our break statement and then a default case. And of course, you can uh, flesh this out a little bit on your own. There we go. Okay, so let's just right click here and run it and take a look at our output. Spring is in the air. Okay, so make sure that when you define your enum that you define it outside of the main method and it should be accessible from within here. 
Well, I hope you got a lot out of this video tutorial. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.